Okay, välkomna till den här presskonferensen på Kungliga Vetenskapsakademin. Welcome to this press conference at the Royal Swedish Academy of Sciences. We are unfortunately a bit late. Uh, we are hoping to start 5:2, so we're about 10 minutes late. Så tio, vi kommer alltså att börja förhoppningsvis 5 i tror vi.
morning and welcome to the Royal Swedish Academy of Sciences. Uh, the Academy met in session this morning to decide on this year's Nobel Prize in Physics and we are now ready to announce it. And it took a little while for us to get in touch with uh, the Nobel laureates, so therefore we are a few minutes late. I apologize for that. I'm Joran Hansen, I'm the Secretary General of the Academy. And with me today is on my right, Professor David Haviland, who is the chairman of the Nobel Committee for Physics. And on my left, Professor Ulf Danielsson, who is among many other things, also a member of the Nobel Committee. Before we announce the prize, I would like to thank all of you who are here in the session room today. And I regret that we have to operate under restrictions imposed by the corona pandemic. And I really appreciate that you are complying with these restrictions, so thank you. I must also apologize to all the journalists who cannot be here in the session room this year. Normally we are close to 90 people in this room, now we must be fewer than 30 persons altogether. And therefore many representatives of the media will have to follow the press conference over the video link. Uh, we're really sorry that we could not admit you and we hope for your understanding and we're offering interviews with Nobel Committee members and other experts uh, immediately after the press conference. So thank you for your understanding. Now, over to the Nobel Prize in Physics. This year's prize is about the darkest secrets of the universe. Årets Nobelpris handlar om universums mörkaste hemligheter. Kungliga vetenskapsakademin har beslutat att utdela 2020 års Nobelpris i fysik med ena hälften till Roger Penrose för upptäckten att bildandet av svarta hål är en robust förutsägelse av den allmänna relativitetsteorin. Och med andra hälften gemensamt till Reinhard Genzel och Andrea Ghez för upptäckten av ett supermassivt kompakt objekt i Vintergatans centrum. The Royal Swedish Academy of Sciences has today decided to award the 2020 Nobel Prize in Physics with one half to Roger Penrose for the discovery that black hole formation is a robust prediction of the general theory of relativity. And the other half, jointly to Andrea Ghez and Reinhard Genzel for the discovery of a supermassive compact object at the center of our galaxy. Die Königliche Schwedische Akademie der Wissenschaften hat heute beschlossen, den Nobelpreis für Physik des Jahres 2020 mit einer Hälfte an Roger Penrose für die Entdeckung, dass die Bildung von schwarzen Löchern eine robuste Vorhersage der allgemeinen Relativitätstheorie ist und die andere Hälfte gemeinsam an Reinhard Genzel und Andrea Ghez für die Entdeckung eines supermassereichen, kompakten Objekts im Zentrum der Milchstraße zu verleihen. Die Akademie Royale des Sciences de Suède hat decidé ce jour d'attribuer le Prix Nobel de Physique 2020 avec une moitié à Roger Penrose pour la découverte que la formation de trous noirs est une prédiction robuste de la théorie de la relativité générale. Et l'autre moitié, conjointement à Reinhard Genzel et Andrea Ghez, pour la découverte d'un objet compact supermassif au centre de notre galaxie. Kurelievska et Academia Nauk Schwezi, Rechila Sivodnia Prisudic, Nobelevski Premi Pofisiki, Adnu Paraladinu, Roger Penrose, Zad Krit et Avo, Sto Obrazovanie Tchornich Dir. Javljajetja na dožnim predskazanjem obšej teoriji odnositelnosti. V taruju paladinu ravna Reinhard Kenzel i Andrea Ghez za odkritje supermasivnog kompaktnog objekta v centri našej galaktiki. And you have the pictures of the new Nobel laureates on the screen behind me. Roger Penrose was born in Colwich in England and got his PhD at Cambridge University. 
He's now Emeritus Professor in Mathematics at the University of Oxford. Reinhard Genzel was born in Bad Homburg vor der Höhe in Germany. He got his PhD at the Universität Bonn and he's currently director at the Max Planck Institute for Extraterrestrial Physics in Garching in Bayern in Germany. And he's also a professor at the University of California at Berkeley in the United States. Andrea Ghez, finally, uh, was born in New York City. She got her PhD at uh, Caltech in Pasadena in California, and she's currently professor at the University of California, Los Angeles in the United States. Now, we are not requesting that the Nobel laureates come to Stockholm in December this year to pick up their prizes. Because of the pandemic, we plan for digital Nobel lectures and a digital prize ceremony with laureates participating over video links. We are still working on these events uh, together with the Nobel Foundation and of course from now on with the laureates themselves. And we'll come back with uh, more information as soon as it becomes available. But already at this stage, I can assure you that the Nobel laureates will receive their awards before the end of the year and that they will be invited to Stockholm next time we can celebrate the Nobel Prize in the traditional way here in Stockholm in December. And with that, I'd like to ask uh, David Haviland, Chairman of the Nobel Committee for Physics, to make some remarks. David, please. Thank you, Joran. On behalf of the Nobel Committee for Physics, I would like to congratulate the laureates in receiving the 2020 Nobel Prize. This year's prize celebrates one of the, most, the discovery of one of the most exotic objects in our universe, the black hole. For many years, physicists questioned the very idea of a black hole, treating it as a peculiarity in our, the in our theory of gravity. Roger Penrose showed that black holes might really exist, forming in a stable and robust process consistent with the theory of general relativity. Reinhard Genzel and Andrea Goetz led research teams to make precise observations over many years, which pointed to the existence of a supermassive black hole in the center of our very own galaxy. My colleagues in the Nobel Committee, my colleague in the Nobel Committee for Physics, Professor Ulf Danielson, will tell us more about the contributions of this year's laureates to the discovery of black holes. Ulf. Thank you, David. And now, Ulf, the floor is yours. As early as the end of the 18th century, the English astronomer John Mitchell and the French scientist Pierre Simon Laplace speculated that there might exist objects with a gravity so strong that not even light can escape. We now call such objects black holes. To create them, you would need to compress the sun into a region only a few kilometers across or to squeeze the earth down to the size of a pea. But it was only in 1915 when Einstein formulated his general theory of relativity that we had the mathematical framework powerful enough to describe such objects. Physicists, Einstein himself included, were confused for decades the mathematics was too complicated. Could something like that actually occur in a real universe? And then, in 1965, inspired by the discovery of new violent phenomena in the universe in need of an explanation, Roger Penrose published a remarkable paper. He introduced new mathematical tools and proved with mathematical rigor that the formation of black holes is an inevitable consequence of general relativity. In a universe governed by general relativity, the formation of black holes is a natural and expected process. Let us study now a black hole a little bit more closely. In general relativity, there's an intimate relation between gravity and time. Down at my feet, 
time runs a trillionth of a second slower per hour than it does up in my head. And if you have a black hole, time even seems to stand still at the horizon of the black hole. Now, I can point towards the black hole and say, there it is. There is the center of the black hole. My finger is stretched along a direction of space. But if I then bring my finger a little bit closer and let the tip of my finger go through the horizon and enter into the interior of the black hole, I will make a startling and somewhat worrying discovery. The direction inwards is now time. And the tip of my finger will be in my far future. And it will be as difficult to pull my finger back out again as it would be to travel backwards in time. Furthermore, my finger will be torn apart and the tip of my finger will be carried by time all the way into the center of the black hole where time itself ends and the known laws of physics cease to apply. But if such objects now actually exist in the real universe, then how could you find them? Well, actually, already in 1783, John Mitchell had an idea. What if, what if there are other luminous objects, such as stars, moving around the black hole? Then one could infer the existence of the black hole by following the motions of the stars. But it would take more than 200 years before this dream would come true. And it was Reinhard Gensel, Andrea Ghez, and their teams who did it. They turned the telescopes towards the center of our galaxy, 26,000 light years away, where there were suspicions that something strange was going on. The heart of our galaxy, the heart of the Milky Way, is hidden inside of a dense cloud of dust. And you have to look in the infrared to reveal its secrets. What they found was incredible. They could see several stars moving around something that they couldn't see. And it was one star in particular that caught their attention. It took the star around 16 years to complete its orbit. At closest approach, it was no more than 17 light hours away from the invisible object. Calculations show that four million solar masses is hiding there. There is no other explanation than a supermassive black hole. This year's laureates have uncovered secrets in the darkest corner of our universe. But this is not just an old adventure coming to its triumphant conclusion. It's a new one beginning as we probe ever closer to the horizons of the black holes. Nature might have new surprises in store. Thank you very much, Ulf, for that excellent uh, introduction. And now it's time for questions. Uh, 
when you ask questions, could you could please uh, push the button on the microphone stand if, so that it, it comes, uh, the, your, your voice is picked up. Uh, actually, we hope to have one of our new Nobel laureates with us on a phone line. Dr. Andrea Gez, are you there? Yes. Hello, this is uh, Joran Hansen again. I'm the guy who called you uh, about an hour ago to give you the good news. And we are now in the middle of our press conference, uh, and I wonder if you're ready to take some questions. I'd be, I'd be delighted. Who would like to start? Thomas Honheide, fast as always. Hello, uh, Professor Gess. Congratulations. Um, I'm just curious. This is Swedish Television Public Service. I'm just curious to hear what went through your mind when you saw that uh, sign that there must be something lurking in the middle of the Milky Way? I think the first thing is doubt. <laughs> um, that you have to prove to yourself that you're really seeing um, what you think. Uh, today dates back uh, for decades. And like you just mentioned there, this, uh, this uh, disbelief at the begin beginning. The importance of science and the belief in following the facts is quite crucial. At this moment in the United States where uh, science is somewhat in doubt, uh, what message do you have maybe today? Oh, that, that science is so important um, and uh, pursuing um, the reality of our physical world is, is just uh, critical to us as, as human beings. Uh, um, I, I, I think today I feel more passionate about um, the, the teaching side of my job than I um, ha have, have ever, uh, because it's so important to convince the younger generation um, that their ability to question and their ability to think um, is just cr uh, crucial, crucial to the future um, of the world. Thank you. Please, we have a question. So, Professor Gess, did you hear the questions? Unfortunately, I did not hear that question. Okay, could you repeat then? Okay, um, uh, you're Thank the you. fourth woman to receive this prize. What, what do you think about that? That was my first question. And the other question is, do you understand what's happening inside the black hole? I mean, time is stopping. What time is it stopping at? Is it stopping now or at the end of the time? Or... Um, well, well, do you have any way of explaining that so that we can understand it? I, I did hear that, um, the, those two questions. Um, so let me take the first. I'm, um, I, I'm thrilled um, to receive the prize, and I take very seriously um, the responsibility um, associated with being, I guess, as you said, the fourth woman uh, to win the Nobel Prize. Uh, and um, I guess I, I hope I can inspire other young women into the field. It's a, it's a field um, that... Uh, has so many pleasures, and if you're passionate about um, the, the science, um, there's so much that can be done. Um, the, let me pick the easier question, which is almost, what is the black hole? Um, we don't know. We have no idea what, uh, what's inside the black hole, and that's what makes these things such exotic um, objects. Uh, they really represent the, the breakdown of our physical understanding um, of the laws of, of physics. Um, so that, that's... Uh, 
that's part of the intrigue is that we we still don't know. It really pushes uh, forward on our on our understanding of the physical world. Question over here. Hello, this is uh, Jörn Spolander from uh, TT News Agency, Swedish News Agency. Uh, first, I want to congratulate, of course, to the prize. And then uh, perhaps you just answered it, but how would you say that this discovery of a black hole far, far away has changed uh, life here on Earth? Well, it, it, it's, it's the, it's, it really represents the basic research. You don't always know how it's going to affect our lives here on Earth, but it is uh, pushing the frontier of our knowledge forwards, both from the, the point of view of pure physics, understanding um, what a black hole is, and then also their astrophysical world in the formation and evolution of galaxies. Uh, and, uh, and so today we really, we really accept that these objects are, are critical to the um, building blocks of our universe. Any more questions to Professor Giz? If not, thank you very much again, Professor Giz, and we'll be in touch about the arrangements for December, but thanks so much for being with us at the press conference. Thank you. Bye-bye for now. Now, any questions for the panel? All crystal clear? If there are no further questions, uh, thanks so much. The, now there will be individual interviews taking place here, out there, and nearly everywhere in the building. And our staff will help you find your way. Please be careful and keep the distance when you exit the room. And then, of course, you're all very welcome back tomorrow for the Nobel Prize in Chemistry. Thank you.